new faces here. We have a wonderful new venue. Thank you, Brian, for hosting. Um, so why don't we all introduce ourselves, uh, mention the uh, property that you own, uh, and any particular position that you hold, or anything interesting you want to say. I'm John Tronson, uh, the Whitney Court Historic Bungalows, 1721, and I am currently president of the Hollywood Property Owners Association. I'm Carrie Morrison, and uh, executive director of the Hollywood Property Owners Alliance. Uh, Drew Planting, treasurer, uh, partner of GPI, owns 1635 Point. Michael Gardano, Arts and Ventures, and the Capital Records Building, and Associated Mark Jones. Joseph D. Moore, 1601 North Tower, Soho, the Richmond Building. Chad Lewis, Klein Financial, Asset Managers for 1600. Uh, Brian Jensen, general manager here at the Lowe's Hollywood Hotel. Thank you, Michael, CNN. Hollywood and Highland. Joe Salazar, good security. Oh, Hi, Kevin Barnes, representing the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, hotel manager. Fantastic. Well, thank you all again for coming. Uh, as many of you know, we start the uh, meetings off with an open forum. If there's anybody here who would like to say anything who's not a board member and some issues are not on the agenda, they are welcome to speak at this time. Hand up, or we're excited about that prospect. So let's move on to the approval of minutes. They were sent out in advance via email. I would be looking for a motion to approve those minutes. Have so many comments. Move by planting, second by, second by motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention, Stevenson, and uh, motion passes. Okay, so let's um, move on to the treasurer's report with Drew. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we've had a busy month since we last got together. Uh, let's see. So, first off, on budget matters. Okay, so a couple, I'm going to go in reverse order. Uh, we, last time I, I spoke, uh, we talked about um, uh, going to RFP on uh, an accountancy firm. And Carrie and staff asked and we agreed that we postpone it until after the first of the year. We have a full docket right now, um, although there is a promise that come January we're going to interview in earnest, no different than we did with uh, the, the insurance providers. So that will happen come first of the year. Um, that on the budget, uh, as you can see, additional expenses anticipated for uh, 2015. One is rent. Uh, I wish Frank were here. We could gang up on it. Either that or the bag. Uh, in any case, we have asked uh, Kerry to incorporate increasing rent consistent with uh, current market. If we get lucky and we beat it, fine. If we don't, then that's market. Uh, likewise, um, there will be a budget for an increase in, in expenses associated with Queen Street uh, uh, because Carrie, Carrie has been, we have been the, uh, wonderful recipients of free parking forever, and that party is over. So we're going to have to pay for parking like anyone else. Um, and the headquarters for our Queen Street phone. Um, yeah, sure. So I don't have a number for you with that, um, any, any hard and fast numbers. Once that comes in, Carrie is going to let us know, and um, you know, we'll do our best. By the way, if, if there's anyone uh, in the room, either personally or someone you might know, who has that kind of uh, storage facility, we would be grateful uh, for, for, for the information, just within the spectrum of who you might know. Um, the budget. 
budget does reflect a, a CPI increase, uh, which you'll recall we discussed the last go round. That's not going to be enough to offset uh, the other increases, but it goes a long way towards mitigating those uh, rent and parking expense increases. Um, on to number two. Uh, there are no surprises. Um, as you can see, we have about $563,000 we're looking for at year's, at year's end, $563,000 of cash. And we'll make, as we did last year, we'll make recommendations as to um, how much to roll over into the new year. That also ties into a discussion that we had last time with respect to uh, delinquencies or accounts receivable. Um, for property for contributions into the bid. Recall that there were some uh, there were state parcels, there was MTA parcels, and there was LAUSD parcels. So on the state parcels, we are at this juncture uh, writing letters and pressing forward with relationships, including Richard Bloom, uh, to go as far as we can to collect on those ARs uh, in, a, in a mentally sort of way, although a firm mentally sort of and can I point out there's a brown letter to, that you approved in the last meeting that's in the packet that's there. Um, so that's important. So uh, you're going to look you're going to look at A, B, and C, and then you're going to say, okay, it's fair enough. But as board members, if we don't get, if we aren't successful with the letter writing campaign, what, what is the next logical step? And while I'm not prepared to discuss it today, clearly if we don't get any Resolved. My guess is there's going to be a lot of foot dragging. There's plenty of expenses to be paid, uh, throughout the state of California. My guess is that we're going to, I'm going to come back to you uh, after conferring with the committee and suggest that if we don't get any, if we don't get any uh, action from them, then we'll have to assess a business strategy and seek legal legal advice and see what our, our rights are. Um, there's no dispute that the, the money is only the only question is how how we get how we get paid. Um, likewise, on the MTA parcels, uh, you may recall Sarah has a, has a relationship uh, with somebody at the MTA, uh, a good working relationship with somebody at the MTA, and we have pressed Sarah to suggest that, hey guys, now's the time to do it, if not, we've got to, we've got to start writing letters. I, I, I'm concerned that if we, uh, if we don't, and, and I've asked Sarah that be by week's end, uh, rather by the middle of next week, if we don't have any clarity and we have to write a letter and, and press our hand no different than we are with the state of California. I don't have any update on LAUSD. That's a different, that's a different conversation for a different day. Um, I have good news with respect to the uh, our insurance situation, our DNO policy. Uh, Carrie and staff have been working really, really hard with our uh, new insurance uh, broker, Gallagher. Uh, They've done a great job. If you recall, uh, we were in harm's way on, on insurance. I say that you in any case, we, we had some insurance issues for reasons no one could really understand. We went out, we went RFP, we selected Gallagher. Gallagher is doing really hard. Gary and staff are doing really hard. And we brought our insurance premiums um, from about 15000 and change down to about 7000 Wow. Is that below or it was before? Yeah. So we can do it for now, right? Yeah, that's okay. Oh, yeah. So we've got the whole We've radically uh, reduced our, our insurance. We, we don't have the one the one caveat is we don't have the umbrella as we did in the last one, but we're not paying $17,000. We do the other things that our premium does not include. So there's no erosion to the extent there would be any legal fees or litigation. There's no erosion from the coverage as it relates to the legal fees. The legal fees are X, the benefits that you follow. So, and, and the other thing is, if you look at if you look at our staff, if you look at our organization, uh, it's been so squeaky clean, and there's not a lot of, and I, I say this with all due respect, there's not a lot of employees, and the employees we have are long-term employees, Uh, very happy, and there's a you know you have to take a look at these three to four. So, from a business risk assessment, I don't think I, I would personally advocate. Um, there's another opportunity to, to, to 
by a foreign insurance that troubles our bill, and I just don't see a lot of risk, and, and you know me well enough by now, I'm pretty risky person. So I think that we should go ahead with the insurance package as um, negotiated by Gallagher and, and be happy with our law. Yeah, and let me just say something about the committee, because um, David Green and Drew took this on right after we, we paid 15500 for a $2 million DMO policy last October, whereas the previous year, that $2 million policy cost $3,500. And um, so we, 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 we canvassed uh, all the bids in the city to find out who they, who they use for insurance. We, we checked with many of you. And, and so with the stewardship of these two gentlemen, finally weighted it down, chose Gallagher, we made them our broker of record. And what's really, uh, the, the level of customer service is like on a quantum improvement from what we had before. Um, and also, they have incredible contacts. Um, they have a lot of nonprofit clients, so they've got access to a lot of different markets. So this policy, which came in this week, it had to be bound on Tuesday, was $5,500 for a $3 million policy. So it's an improvement over what we had last year with you know, far less cost. Um, and I just want to, I know how busy these two guys are, and, um, and Monica has also kind of helped, because she's on the finance committee, but we could not have, we could not have done this without them. So, um, they saved us about 10 grand. Thank you. That really concludes the treasurer's report. Any questions for group? We don't need to make a motion on uh, pursuing your uh, recommendation. No, just a motion to approve the um, financial statement for September 30th. Everyone, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, September 30th financial as presented in the package. I'll make a motion. Mr. Moore. Anybody want to make a second? Okay. Motion again. Any further discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Financials are approved unanimously. Thank you, Drew. You almost worked. And I just want to point out that the budget has to, will be brought back to your meeting next month. And Monica and David and Drew are working on this ad hoc budget preparation committee. So if anybody has a desire to be a part of it, let us know. But we'll bring that back for a closed presentation. Excellent. Okay, let's move on to our committee and activity reports. Marketing and communications, Ben? Yeah, um, I'll let Joe update you on the infographics. I know I've had a, a conference call this morning. Yep, the infographics are about 99% complete. Um, we just went back for final edits on just some punctuation and minor changes. So Why don't you explain what they are? Sure, yeah. For those of you that aren't aware, we've been working for probably about the past three months with Paints and Code our PR company on um, putting together infographics just to kind of inform stakeholders and those outside just about what has been occurring in Hollywood in terms of residential and also businesses and, and everything in between. So uh, working with them, we put together these infographics that as the picture is worth a thousand words, uh, everyone knows, they kind of depict the story here. So um, we, like I said, we're about 99% done with them. Uh, we had Gary Leonard using Devin go out and take some great photos that are going to be utilized in them along with some unique graphics that we've had a graphic designer do. If you were at the annual meeting, or excuse me, the uh, board retreat, you kind of got a sneak preview of it. So uh, we're hoping that they'll be done by the beginning of November. And then from there, what we have done working with Haynes & Co. is develop a, a list of publications that we'd like to target to do an exclusive on um, the infographics once they're released. And then from there, we will put them on the site and have uh, access for all of you and anyone else who'd like to look at them. Um, so moving on, we've had a couple of marketing activities with our PR company, Games & Co. On September 20th, in your packet, there's a, um, a little mini packet of the Haunted Hollywood Blogger Tour that we did. We had the tour guide from Dearly Departed Tours come out and lead the tour, starting at Pantages and then walking down the boulevard, um, stopping in at Hollywood Playing Costume, and then Hollywood Museum, and then we ended up with a tour of the Roosevelt 
And all along the way, we met people, and they told us like ghost stories about their property. And so it was pretty fun, and it did result in two media hits so far. Um, there's an NBC4 piece here, and there's also one from um, this, this magazine. I can't remember the name of it. Welcome to SoCal. Um, so we put that together, and we're working on another blogger tour next month for um, restaurants. So it's kind of a spin-off of what we did for Sunset and Dine, which I've also put packaged in here, the coverage that we got for Sunset and Dine. Even though that's an event that the Sunset and Dine did, did there were quite a few um, businesses from the Hollywood bid that participated, including Pantages Theater, um, Beso, Clio at the Redberry, uh, Starbucks, Montalban Theater, Greenleaf, and East Town. Um, Greenleaf is a new restaurant that's opening up inside East Town. Um, Tim Horn Platts did the beer bar, um, Village Pizzeria. So um, that was a great event, and we ended up, the Sunset Vine Bid Board raised $4,000 through the event for the Center of Blessed Sacrament, and it did get quite a bit of media coverage, which also covered some of the businesses here in this bid. So we're looking forward to that foodie tour, um, probably think the first week of November, and then we're playing another um, tour in the first, first part of next year. Are there any questions about that? Thank you. Um, we're going to be having another marketing committee meeting um, probably next month once Jan is back. Um, she was in New York and she's having a dental surgery, I think. So once she's back in commission, we'll have another marketing committee meeting. Thank you. Any questions for Devin? Excellent work. Thank you very much. The two on streetscape and planning. Ms. Bessley? Yeah, so um, our next meeting is in early November. Anybody um, who's interested in attending, we'd love to have you. Um, the Brave Union, so we, um, that's November 10th at 2.30 um, at the HPOA office. And then um, the La Brea Union, which if you happen to have driven past it at Holy and La Brea, um, it was re-landscaped um, about two weeks ago. We got about 80% 80, 80 done, and we're still waiting for some of the plants to arrive at the nursery. So um, next Wednesday, we'll be out there again um, installing more trees, more plants, and then also um, irrigation and all that has been repaired. So um, it looks beautiful. We'll have a nice sign and plaque that's there um, acknowledging that the HBOA was um, able to donate the, the money towards this effort. So it looks really nice. Um, also, Joe, do you want to cover the status of the church? Absolutely. Um, as, was, as was reported at the meeting last month, um, we were given a 30-day notice to vacate the Selma site where we have our Queen Street team presently. Um, we did get an extension on that, but as you were aware, we've been negotiating for a long time to uh, lease the Cherokee garage space. Um, we since it is technically a city-owned space, um, they had to have a council motion to approve us moving forward in the lease negotiations and essentially drafting the lease, which the city attorney's office does. So a uh, motion was put before city council just this past Tuesday. It was approved. So now the next step is it's going before the city attorney's office to draft the lease, and then from there we would sign it and hopefully move in soon. And uh, again, this will be used for Queen Street. Yeah, although I did talk to some of the city attorney's office today, they said it's likely a several month yeah, it's over a year that we've been in negotiations, and uh, we started the process of reaching out probably a year before that. So it's about six months before she returned your phone call. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How much space is it that you need? It's about, uh, that space is about a thousand square feet. That's what you're looking for. Okay. Because our guys right now are in a parking lot, and they have a shed, like a sphere shed. The old HBT, Hollywood Beautification Team. It's a great location for it. Yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. As usual, things take a long time. <laughs> um, from the mobility <coughs> side, um, there's been some great progress made. Um, we, uh, we have actually, I was on a phone call today with Bloomberg Associates and Jeanette Sadekhan was on call. She was the former Transportation Commissioner from New York City that has implemented. Um, the bike lane, the bike plan there, also the um, bike sharing program, and uh, the pedestrian plaza in, on, along Broadway. And so 
she is um, she she now works for Bloomberg on a consulting basis, and they work with cities for free. So um, they're on contract with uh, Mayor Garcetti's team, and they um, are very 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 excited to work with us um, on this mobility summit. So um, we just nailed down a date today. It's January 22nd, um, and we are going to possibly start this in the morning um, with Jeanette making a presentation and then we would segue into a bus tour to other areas throughout the city to look at um, where these infrastructure projects have been implemented. <coughs> it's going to be a fun, um, you know, experiential uh, <coughs> uh, summit and I really encourage you to see her speak. Um, I will send out also the TED talk that she did. If you guys haven't already seen it, um, it's really worth taking a few minutes just to, to listen to her um, well, that's our future, coming, coming to a roof near you so. Yeah, definitely, and, um, and it's, just, it's, it's just very exciting that they're giving us such attention because they've got cities all around the world that want their, their kind of um, streets re reimagined, and they really are uh, captivated by the idea of working in Hollywood. Um, and then the last, um, the last piece of this, as you already heard, we're looking for uh, to rent parking spaces for our clean street vehicles um, and we're in communication with Hollywood Presbyterian Church. We are offering some rent for the parking spaces in addition to some of the services that could be provided in time. So um, if anybody has any connections for parking. And it doesn't even have to be right in the bid either. Yeah, it can be on the Excellent work. Uh, let's jump into security. Ms. Yamada. Um, well, as you know, that the security committee is a joint committee with the things that find it, and we call it comment and have a in the Market Bakery. Um, Steve Sutter would then just give a recap to what was happening year to day, dressed up over 100 in last year. He said that 65% of the total rent for the other are to do with alcohol and drinking in public, so they want to take a look at us. Um, homeless referrals are up by 485. They clocked 970 hours on bicycle patrol. Business contacts are up by 17,000. Um, and ECA Alley continues to be a problem with violations and the monitoring of ECA Alley today. Um, LAPD, lead officer Washington, um, gave a report on 1650 North Line, where the Spa is boarded up. Um, they have some issues there, and they're going to ask for a test um, LA Sheriff's Department, Hollywood and Body Rail Station um, had five robberies, two aggravated assaults, and six thefts. They have one problems with sneakers. And Ms. T said that department assaults are on the rise on the red line and there was a tap at 8 and Union Street the night before the meeting um, to one of the officers. Um, they're going to bring back to the next meeting some of the studies from the Metro. Um, as a special project that they were doing by having um, officers on the buses. Um, that was the last month. So we're we'll bringing that back next month um, to us. Um, Jackie wasn't available, so Carrie actually gave, um, actually, what I thought was the highlight of the meeting, the, the report on um, the trial with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, um, and 33 stay away orders overall at Hollywood and Highland. Um, Dan was CD13. Um, reported the board of supervisors vote um, of the decision and the parking meters. I think Carrie, we should wonder that a little bit more detail yeah. later. Um, homeless count is going to be on January 29th from 8 to 12. And um, they're also um, undertaking more of the tour buses and forceful training um, for Hollywood Boulevard and their union tour operators. Um, the Blessed Sacrament came in and um, Nate French, the director of community engagement, and Senator Dominic, the director, came to um, try to get people off the street and in chronic homelessness, and they want to get them into sustainable permanent housing. Um, they want to support the businesses and actually offering training for your child to how to treat the homeless people with respect. And you know, I think Karen Matthew with McDonald's actually took them up on the offer so that um, they can help train the workers and you know, do something be more productive. So thank you so much for having the people come for that. Um, so just 
on the on the MTA, interestingly enough, I was at the chamber last night and Art Meehy was there. Who else was at the chamber yesterday? Oh, Michael Bernardo. Uh, he's the CEO of the <coughs> Metro. And I indicated to him that for years we've always had a Metro uh, representative on the bid board because they are a property owner and gives us uh, someone to talk to on issues like we're experiencing with the parcels. So he made note of that. But what he also said was that the um, they're going to be going out to RFP after the first of the year on the security for the metro. Mm -hmm. And so he asked, um, you know, just very quickly, what has been your experience with the sheriffs? And he said one of the things that they're looking at is maybe <coughs> dividing um, that the sheriffs would stay underground and the LAPD would be above ground. And um, I just said, well, our experience has been a little bit like, you know, it's, it's a little bit of this. There's these blurred, somewhat ambiguous boundaries. True. So um, he said he would reach back out to us so we could give him some you know, insight into what that's like with the, oh, Charlie's not here, but the fine plaza. Yep, and then there are tenants at the time, you know, so there are community police and track records and nothing. That's good. That's good. So I think LAPD. Next question. Um, I here the last thing. Where, where are we with the upgrade to our video cameras? Yeah, so the LAPD surveillance camera program is now there's seven of nine cameras in right now. Um, we were waiting on uh, Kilroy to allow permission for repeaters to be installed. Those repeaters have been installed. So um, the Yucca and Coingo camera for LAPD was installed last week. Um, the Sunset and Coingo camera will be installed next week. And then the week or two after that will be the last camera, which is Selman Trader. Then all nine cameras will be up and running. And those, are they going to be tied to the LAPD or? They are. They're LAPD cameras. They are their property. Do we have a map that shows the location of each one of those? Yes, yeah. we do. Okay. Yeah, we donated those to the jail. <coughs> and those are BTC cameras, so yep. somebody has to actually be physically operating them. They're on a program is what LAPD sets them to usually, depending on, or sometimes they'll set them in certain locations. Yeah, it just depends on what they desire. So actually, that is one of the things we also talked about at the budget meeting this week, and we need to put together a little working group with the security committee to talk about with the security contingency funds that you have in the budget for next year, one of the options might be to start to build out a mesh network that would be would facilitate adding cameras to the system. And there's been some property owners have expressed an interest. I know Chad and Charlie and Frank and possibly others to um, go ahead and privately donate a camera into the system that would more easily operate within the mesh network and then we could enhance the, the coverage. So we're going to, you know, start to talk about that. I don't know, we're not going to have all the details worked out in a month, but we can at least set aside money for that as an eventuality. Another question, Chelsea. So are these motorized cameras where they can change their view? Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's what the ad job was talking about, called PTZ, Pan Tilt Zoom, so 360. Yeah. And, um, you can program them 6 o'clock in the morning and start here, 10 o'clock they're pointing over here, they can rotate, they can stay fixed, you can joystick them, they're, they're state of the art. Our, our challenge has always been we just really don't know how often somebody's sitting behind them using them. So another use of our discretionary funds might be just get somebody over there who really knows how to drive these things. And he can probably give us an independent assessment of how often they're used, how many people that are truly knowledgeable about them, and how many he can educate them yeah. on, you know, how to drive the hot rod. Yeah, so we will definitely pull that little working group together. Um, the donation station, uh, this is this, you know, this arose out of our whole research we've done on the number of people who are um, arrested for drinking in public in this bid, which is over 60% of the people who are, um, are uh, arrested in this bid is, is for serial drinking. We've got about 70 people we've identified as chronic inebriates um, who are, for what we can tell, um, it's easy to get money from passers-by and then to buy alcohol. So some of you have been on the board all year. You've heard us talking about the different things that we've tried to do, a, a voluntary ban on selling cheap liquor and this and that. So, one of the strategies we're looking at is this concept of a donation station, um, which a lot of cities across the country have tried with some success, and it's a parking meter 
that has been re rehabbed to accept change and also credit card donations. And the money then goes into a nonprofit 501c3 fund, um, which is used for services um, toward ending homelessness. And we are having a focus group uh, invited about seven different property and businesses on the 28th. Uh, anyone is, you know, if you're interested, um, feel free to come to test this idea. You know, there's got to be community support for this. We also have to get community sponsorship of the meters and um, uh, do a, a messaging and branding campaign to educate the public about why we, we have these and why we encourage people not to give money to PAN members but to actually support programs here in Hollywood. So I know Trader Joe's is coming with um, 1,600 vines, um, uh, uh, Tage, the Wax Museum, uh, Amoeba Records, trying to arc light there, uh, possibly CIM, uh, just to test the idea, test drive the idea. So if there's anyone interested in coming, please let me know via the office. And we're doing this in concert with Council District. Great uh, public awareness campaign to go to these side from factors like this. Uh, is there a way that I can get notes from the meeting while I'll be out of town? Um, I'd be yeah. interested in notes. Yeah, I can do that. You know, we have. And the other question, too, the Monaco, when's the, the homeless count again? What day? It is on January 29th at 8 to 12. We'll be soliciting volunteers probably in the summer. Any other questions for Mrs. Um, Ewell? Next meeting is Thursday, November 13th at 10. We will put out a notice to you at the end And Monica, we may um, postpone that meeting because I'm thinking of taking the staff away for a planning retreat, okay. and that seems to be a good day to do that. So we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Frank, your timing is excellent. You are next on the agenda.
Okay. Um, any questions for our nominating committee? Very good. Thank you, Frank. Uh, seismic issues. Terry, is that you? Yeah, so I just um, wanted to let you know, I, I sent this out to you all at this conference on Monday, the Structural Engineers Association of Southern California, and I've, I've been talking with um, a couple of property owners who have concrete buildings so that I can just get some empirical information. My, I told them I would participate on the panel, but I would just speak generically. Just as the voice of property owners who are faced with a lot of practical questions on what it might mean if the city has a living system for concrete buildings. And today you saw there's a big article about that in the LA Times with respect to the apartment, South Korea apartment buildings. So um, uh, thank you for your help. And if anybody wants to weigh in and you know give me any other insights before Monday, I'd appreciate it. I think I actually want to talk to you a little bit. Um, and it might be a good conference to attend if you know if you want to hang out with a bunch of structural engineers. I think it's that way. And where is that? It's downtown somewhere. Okay. I'll some new business. Uh, we have a 2014-15 strategic work plan. We've heard this from our last meeting, <coughs> but it is meant to be the guidelines for our near future. So maybe I'll just, um, I hope you all have had a chance to look at it. And I know not everybody was able to come to the strategic planning meeting this July that we had in East Town, but I know that all of you were involved in, in one committee or another to kind of prepare for that meeting. So we, we ended up um, either refining or adding or winnowing away work objectives in four categories. One is safe Hollywood nights. The second one is public space management and long-term planning initiatives. The third one is state power and sidewalks. And then the fourth one is stakeholder engagement and communications. So in each case, we've got a statement of the problem which has been revised, and a goal, and then some specific um, objectives and tasks. This, this serves as, you know, our challenge as this bid is we get asked to be involved in so many things. And um, it's hard for us to say no, it's hard for you to say no. And so this at least gives us a bit of a roadmap to give us a sense of focus. Certainly things are going to pop up that we didn't anticipate, but it, it gives us a roadmap um, to move forward. Um, so if there's anything in here that you feel doesn't reflect what we talked about in July or anything that's missing, this would be a good time to bring that up. We also try to indicate, you know, there's some things that we can take the lead on, but there's other things that we might just monitor or partner. Um, and so we try to discern what would be our appropriate level of involvement on these issues. Well, I went through this, you sent it out in advance, and it, I, I think it's an excellent tool to keep us focused on what's really our critical blocking and tackling issues. Um, it's easy for organizations like this to get distracted and lose their, their focus on exactly, you know, the limited scope of things that they're supposed to really be doing. And this helps us stay focused on that, and then I, I really like the format where you, where you have, you know, a clear statement of the problem. And you're trying to get from there to, to the goal, and, and there's steps to take along the way. Anybody have any comments on this? Any questions, recommendations? In terms of the stakeholder engagement and communication, so we had a conversation at the Chamber of Board meeting yesterday where there's also a talk about marketing initiatives that we've been working on. So that really should be coordinated, I would think, and that's something that actually might make for a stronger effort if it's to combine it with the city and the Chamber. It's very loose right now, and it really just comes out of the fact. It's quite interesting, actually, that that Billboard Realty, when they sit out marketing a public tenant, major tech tenants in San Francisco don't have Hollywood on the list. And if they do, they have a negative perception. So the question is, how do you overcome that perception? Can we have the marketing, marketing initiative overcome it? Um, uh, or maybe there are more creative efforts rather than just something that we want to get to think of as marketing. So it's out there, and there's a lot of great knowledge in the community that can be really helpful. And, you know, I think that there's something to pitch it after the people. Yeah, I agree. I was interested to hear all that has been going on, and we really haven't been in the discussion. Right, yeah. right, right. It's always been a challenge because, you know, there's, you know, we have our, our limited.
limited geographic area, and the chamber covers such a wide area that, you know, do you stay focused, do you go broad? And then the other challenge is to go, well, how have we been ready for our close-up? You know, so I can remember having some conversation about whether we even want it to have people come down. Right. Come I talked about that yesterday, I guess yeah. it must have been six years ago that we had this That's right. That we thought, yes, if we, if we advertise or market and people come and they're disappointed, that would be worse than yeah. the, the, the uh, wouldn't make the effort for the So, But I think, I think Hollywood is ready. I do, I do. The time has come. Like, what that means in terms of a marketing initiative, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's that's very very good comment. I'll make note of that. We'll, we'll try to see if we can coordinate the chamber. We'll see how it okay, so uh, we should. Um, uh, I would think we'll need to receive a motion to uh, approve this strategic work plan. If anybody says so, I'd like to make one, uh, John Lyons, second by Chad. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? Any objections? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, let's move on to our staff report. Okay. So um, I uh, wanted to point out that we have had a, a gentleman attend uh, the last couple meetings here. I'm sitting here in the, in the corner of the room and um, who has made several public records requests of the bid. And for those of you who, you know, everyone who goes through the board orientation, and Brian will participate in this, and Darcy, we do um, equip you with information to know that as a nonprofit organization, we are subject to the Brown Act um, by virtue of uh, a court case from 1999 and then subsequent um, legislation that clarified that. So even though we are a nonprofit organization and we are not a government agency, we are subject to the Brown Act and the Public Records Act. So as you know, we take great pains to place our meetings um, 72 hours in advance. Um, you all know that we never take actions that are not uh, noticed on these agendas as an action item. If, if there's a motion that somebody wants to introduce that hasn't been action, we'll wait till the next meeting. Um, so uh, we appreciate um, some of the materials that Mr. Riskin has sent to the staff to make sure that we're aware of um, all the rules. And he has them. I have everything right here in my file. Um, but the public records request, because I just feel like I should let you know um, that we um, were asked to provide um, 11 months worth of the security reports that Steve Seiler gives at each, he brings to each security committee meeting. So um, Mr. Risk is going to be in our office tomorrow. we will be going through those reports. Um, we'll, we'll make them available to him, anything he wants to look at. Um, he has asked for um, a copy of an email that the city attorney sent to me um, at the uh, security committee meeting that I used to report on um, some of her activities because she's not able to attend the meeting. And I will provide that email. Um, he asked for um, examples of where we had changed our website in the month of October on a particular page. And I think it probably relates to the fact that we did forget, and we have admitted and it was fixed, two days before the security meeting, the security agenda was not posted on the Hollywood bid page, it was posted on the, security, on the Sunset bid page. Deb made the change, um, so we, we appreciate being noticed, noticed of that. Um, but what he has asked for, which is kind of something we didn't even know existed, was um, um, examples of every change we made on that page during the month of October. So we have found a way to do that. We will provide that to you when you come in tomorrow. Um, and uh, Did you post outside the door. Yeah, we post outside the door. We post on the internet. Um, we uh, post, you know, at the meeting locations. So, we, so it's not you didn't post. You just didn't post everywhere. Yeah, it, it did not make it on the internet that right. day. So if you if you look, you'll see the agenda for this meeting on the internet meeting agendas in the lobby here today. We also, um, we always post the agendas outside our door. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're really willing to do whatever we have to do to make sure that the public knows that they can come to these meetings. And as you know, we've had a history of accommodating that. So um, I just wanted you all to be aware of that. We have, we're fulfilling that to the best of our ability. And so that's that. <clears throat> um, second thing is, again, Ron Radke wanted to make sure that you all know that he has his 
35-year anniversary at Madame Tussauds on November 1st. If anybody can come, the tickets are really reasonable, and it looks like it'll be a really nice event for them. Um, we have home walk. Um, we're going to pass these around. We are going to have a Hollywood team. Uh, it's a great opportunity to come and just, for a couple hours, come down to near USC. There's about 10,000 people that walk. United Way raises about half a million dollars through this effort, and the money then goes into programs um, to end homelessness in, in LA City. And actually, a number of those funds have actually made their way back to Hollywood. Um, let's see. Chromosome. Joe, do you want to report on sure. the meeting that we've had? Is everybody familiar that we are part of the, of the federal Chromosome, and there's, there's We've been we're part of a designated swap in LA that has this favorable status and positions this community to be um, more favorably uh, ranked for certain federal grants. We're kind of beginning to understand the implications of what this means for us over the next 10 years. But I know Joe attended a meeting this week on housing related. Yes, yeah, so it's actually part of our strategic goals and objectives is to learn more about what the promise zone is. Um, it's a 10 year designation. Those of you that don't know, and it's carries into the federal program. Um, on October 8th, I was invited by YPI, the <coughs> Policy Institute, and HUD, the Housing and Urban Development Department, to uh, attend a meeting at the LPD's uh, community room there. And among those attendees were myself, uh, the chamber, HUD was in the room, uh, some developers, affordable housing developers, uh, Thai CDC, and some others. And essentially, as part of the Promise Zone, uh, there's a program called the Choice Neighborhood Grant. Um, for those of you who may have been familiar with a program in the past called the HOPE 6 program um, that focused on public housing, uh, the Choice Neighborhood Grant has come out of the HOPE 6 program now. It's the, the new iteration, if you will, of that program. And what that is, the difference is that it looks at not just the public housing component, but the neighborhood around the site. And so um, as part of this grant, there's three things that they focus on. They focus on the neighborhood, they focus on the people who live here, and then on the housing um, and the way you are eligible for this grant, it's a $30 million grant, is HUD will first give you a grant for planning. Uh, you have to submit a <coughs> plan showing how this $30 million will be used in the community. So um, the key, uh, or the, the, the gentleman who's directing this is a man by the name of Tony Salazar. He has a firm called uh, McCormick, Baron, and Salazar, MBS. Um, they've done about five of these 12 projects um, across the country. They're well-versed in, in the, the kind of the planning stage and, the, and the, the grant process. So YPI has partnered with them to get this grant solidified for Hollywood, um, or to at least try. So um, the Hollywood Western Project. The Hollywood Western Project, yes, was one of his projects, exactly. So in order to even uh, be considered, you have to have two federally funded project sites, so that was one of them. And the other is the, uh, for those of you that don't know, there's a Cherokee, Wilcox um, lot that the city has put up for RFP, which is the second site that is being considered for this. It's a one-year process. Um, ideally, the first draft will be uh, done in early to mid-summer of the plan, and then in October 2015, they would submit the final plan to HUD um, for a decision on whether or not they would get the $30 million grant. So um, part of the, the reason that we were invited to the table along with the other organizations there was to talk about what the housing need is in Hollywood, and the, in terms of affordable and, and kind of creative housing. So the focus that the group felt was to look at permanent supportive housing, student housing, because of the 16 post-secondary institutions that we have here in this community with tons of students living here that don't have anywhere to, to move to. Um, looking at ownership housing, we have a high rental market. There's not a lot to own, so if there's some potential there for ownership. Uh, equitable transit development, and then workforce housing, which we've started um, with the Bode Communities Project at South Cherokee, which is why we're getting kicked off of that lot that's workforce housing for LUSD. But um, looking at what are some other potential options. So those are kind of the five areas that they would like to see this grant be used towards, and then kind of looking at the community around it and supportive services that could be used to help with that. So it was it was really a great meeting. Um, for me, it was very informative. As I said, I mean, I'm learning about the problem zone just like many of you here. And so it's, it's the first that I've heard of a potential grant that we can obtain, not necessarily our organization, but Hollywood. So it's exciting. Sounds like a good team to go. Yeah, thank you for that. Great. Um, I do have one more item that is um, not on the agenda, um, but we, um, 
one of the reasons why I wanted to take the staff for a retreat to do some planning is that um, Sarah is going to be experiencing some changes in her life. Um, I'll let her describe the specifics, um, but she's going to be moving. And why don't you explain what's happening, and I'll share kind of what I think we're going to do to prepare for that. Yeah, so um, many of you know my husband, Ben, um, is, uh, works in the real estate development world, and he works for a company that has um, a group of projects that are in Northern California. Um, and so uh, he is being, being offered a position where he's going to be overseeing any of those projects that are in Northern California, in addition to the ones in Southern California. So we'll be splitting our time between the Bay Area, Bay Area and also here. Um, I'll share the Southwest coupon for the <laughs> chat. January, um, what this means for me is that I'll be um, kind of winding down my tenure here at the bid, a full time tenure, and then um, be available to work as a um, any kind of contractor if you so choose to hire me. Um, and I think it would be a great opportunity for me to focus really on the projects that you know I really love and care about, and really have kind of the connections to make happen. So, um, so that. Bittersweet. It's a um, great news for us, but it's also, um, you know, hard to imagine not coming to the office every day. Yeah, Sarah's been with me for 16 years. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's her child. I know. Well, she was like a really college grad when we first met her. So, um, that, of course, um, you know, with a four person staff, um, you know, one ball gets thrown up, like, okay. So, but we're going to, what I want to do is take the staff off site. We're going to go somewhere with like lots of white paper on the wall and, you know, take this and, you know, kind of what we see and the skill sets that we have and parse out what it is Sarah can work on, you know, this mobility summit that you've gotten us into and, you know, some of the things that she's really passionate about um, that relate to the landscaping and. <laughs> and um, and then probably reframe um, a staff position, full-time staff position, uh, to um, take on. You know, we got to deal with running the Sunset Mine Bit Board. You know, uh, and uh, just kind of dividing up tasks amongst probably five people. So I want to be able to um, have a plan that we're ready to kind of push the button on in the new year. I don't think it requires more money. I think it's all done within the budget. Um, but we're excited for Sarah, but it's going to be really, really different. Yeah. Well, I'll bring my camera. Okay. Um, sorry, one other thing I just forgot to mention in regards to the last item was that they are doing design shirts in November for their plan, if anybody's interested in attending on November 13th and the 19th. Five to seven. Uh, why can't I do those? On the housing plan? On the housing plan, yeah. Where is that located? I believe they're going to be at the Hollywood Community Room there, Fountain South. But I got to double check on the location, but they sent that to us today. Did yeah. you send out a note? Yep. I'm in. Absolutely. Top and cover, please. Yep. You do that. Any other questions, comments? I want to ask about the annual board dinner. Yeah, we have an annual board dinner on our agenda. Our location to be determined, and I'm assuming that's what you're doing as well. Yeah, so last year we had the dinner at Capital Records, which was kind of a nice um, change, and we, we had a caterer come in. We have, um, in previous years, had it in, it used to be called Twist. Twist. Is that room even there anymore, Brian? It's, it is. It is. It's called Preston's now. Preston's? <coughs> Preston's. Preston. So we had it in that room because it's a nice, quiet room, and it gives gives the board a chance. It's a great opportunity to like welcome the new board members and bid adieu to outgoing board members and just um, talk about the year. So um, I'm open to suggestions because I need to I need to get this book um, for right after our board meeting. I think we do a catered rooftop event in Florida. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Is it um, possible to... It's an awkward uh, moment. 
Um, but let's talk about it. Okay. Because okay. it could be great. I also, I, uh, I did, uh, I did have this great party last two weeks ago in the Bardo Mezzanine, which opens up. Uh-huh. It's an open air mezzanine, and we catered that for about uh, 30 people. And uh, it was actually really, really nice. Okay. So, I mean, they, they, they cook right out of the kitchen. Yeah, that's easier than getting a caterer to bring yeah. food in, which can be a little bit of a challenge. Right? But it was, uh, it was actually a very nice uh, affair for that size group. That size group. Right. So, 12 or so. Yeah, exactly. A little small. We take, we take the mezzanine part that has the, you know, the open air, and we just set up a long table down in the center of it. And, uh, you know, cocktails and the other rooms work on this. So. Yeah, I don't know the day. But if it's available, okay. or if the day is flexible, that's an option. It'd be after this board meeting, which is November 20th, I think. Thursday, November 20th. Oh, so check if you want that. And it would be like this, 16th. Yes. Yeah, what the date? Is it the, the next board meeting? November 20th. Okay. okay. It's a fun event to have then you should make a point to go first. Because I bring the questions. Yeah. And there is channels like. Yeah. Uh, any any other comments, questions? All right. That was an easy one. This meeting is adjourned.